welcome to another episode of Control Up Community Radio. I'm looking forward to this episode. We've, oh, you know, we're on a third episode already. I can't believe it. Uh, please, in the future, don't expect them to go as fast. Sometimes I'll be traveling, but I've been off the air for so many years now that I have a lot of folks I want to chat with, and we're trying to queue them up as quick as possible. I will say I am going on vacation, Christmas holiday, back to Iowa, where I'm born and raised, uh, for basically from the 17th of December till the end of the year. Hopefully, I'll have a few queued up. Um, but and then in January, I'm going to be in Florida. I don't know how much I'll get to do podcasting, but I'll try to get a bunch queued up and, and share them with you guys over that, that period of time. But if, if I, if I take a little bit of time off, please don't, don't hate me for it. Uh, we're going to do our best to get as many of these out as, as possible, but eventually they're going to probably move into a, every two weeks we'll release an episode. Um, but really it comes down to, you know, if there's somebody I want to record, if there's something up and I have the time, let's do it. And I have a bunch of folks that I really want to get on the line and, and share with their story with you. And today I have a very special story. So somebody that I just really love uh, to death and I've known for over 20 years now. And I remember meeting the man and I remember how humble he was when I first met him. And he was just interested in meeting me and I was more interested in meeting him. And we had a great conversation that day and we were in Houston, uh, believe it or not, I remember it. And we went, walked down the street, two Alexes and a Doug. And I'll never forget that. And from that day, I was like, I, I like this guy. And over the next 20 years, he proved to me why he, why I like him. He's a special person. And he created something extremely, extremely special. And that is uh, what we affectionately today call E2EVC or as the faithful call it, Pub Forum. And it's really the first independent conference uh, and you might not know his name. His name's Alex Cooper, but you might not know it. You might not, you might have never heard of Alex's name because he's not the guy that goes and says, look at me, look at me, here am I, I'm Alex. He's the guy that puts other people on stage and makes them heroes. But really he's the, the guy behind the, the, the curtain pulling these strings and, and, and creating an environment where we can all shine and we can all grow uh, and we can grow together. And to me, that's what community is all about. That's why I got into the community business. I didn't, I, I wasn't, some of you don't know me and you think, oh, Doug's a community guy. No, I'm an engineer by training. That's what I wanted to be as a great engineer. But I went down this path of, of helping other people and having other people help me. And then I realized one day, boy, wouldn't it be great if we built a community so that a bunch of people can help each other? Well, that's what Alex did 20 years ago. So I wanted to bring him on. This is the 20th anniversary year of E2EVC, aka Pub Forum, and have him share his story of how he started this, why he started, some of the trials and tribulations, some of the stories. And uh, let's see where it goes. You know, we could talk for hours. I know that. It's, well, we have 20 years and a lot of experiences, a lot of stories, a lot of presenters, a lot of history. Uh, if you ever get a chance to meet Alex, please walk up to him. He's one of the most approachable people you ever meet. He's a super great guy and uber intelligent. Someday I'll bring him on and we'll just talk tech. Uh, uh, but today I want to share the story about community, This share the story of, of E2EVC and, and what Alex built, because this guy definitely changed our world, and uh, that's something very special. So no, with no further ado, here's my uh, interview with one of my heroes, Alex Cooper. Okay, Alex, thank you so much for doing this. I can't believe that I actually managed to talk you into doing this uh, podcast with me. Uh, I've told a few of our friends, our mutual friends, and they're like, you got Alex? I was like, yes, I got Alex. Like, really? I was like, I can't wait. So not only am I excited, but they are too. Thank you for doing this. Thank you for having me. Uh, so how did I talk you into this? <laughs> well, that was a very good question. Uh, I would say uh, you pushed a lot, and uh, that's how we ended up being here. Oh, perfect. We have a good topic today because uh, um, I think that you know what you built over the past 20 years, and it's been 20 years now, uh, is one of the most amazing things in, in our industry, or in, really in any in industry, is a community that sort of feeds upon itself, right? That creates things, something better than it 
b- better than the sum of its parts and and something that you know people just really truly love i i love going to e2es uh i absolutely love it and uh i'll never well i am going to miss the next one because my sister's getting married which i'm not happy about but uh otherwise i'll never miss one so uh so that said i'm getting ahead of myself so uh you are the the founder and creator of something originally called pub forum and now you called e two e v c uh maybe you can give some idea you know insights into the naming there and you know why did you found this thing what you know what what's what's the story where did this come from well uh thanks for a good question um so the idea of the platform uh originally came from uh we used to hang out with a couple of other guys in uh Citric support forums right that's where the idea kind of materialized. But the idea to create something like that in that specific industry was in my mind for quite a long time. And um, just when I seen that there are more and more people that are gathered around one idea, that's where it became a bit more a bit more profound. That's where I wanted to create it in this particular industry. But that's definitely not the first event I created or not the first gathering of people because before there was I had a huge interest in Microsoft SMS server. I had a huge interest in novel uh, products like the netware uh, stuff like that. So um, yeah, that wasn't that wasn't the first thing. Uh, but when time came, that was around 2003, um, we used to spend quite a lot of time in the support forums of Citrix, and there were three or a couple of more guys that were spending their too much time. Uh, that was me, Stefan Vermeulen, Thomas Kötzing, uh, and a couple of other guys. But uh, we kind of spent a lot of time not just answering questions, but we spent a lot of time talking with each other on this on those forums ourselves. So at some point um, in time, I was visiting visiting the I forum, the Citrix I forum, and uh, that's where I realized that in this specific industry. Uh, in the industry of Citrix products, uh, at some point I realized that iForum is a very good conference, but there's a couple of things missing. Uh, one of the things that I already seen in other in other conferences or with other vendors was that there were a lot of people who would go to the conference and who would definitely like to listen to the top guys in the industry, but uh, I noticed that a lot of guys actually wanted to share their experiences as well. And that was the challenge here because to be able, I mean, this is something what I faced myself a couple of times before, to be able to present at those conferences. Uh, it was not really so much about your experiences or what you know. It was more about whether you can present, whether you have presented, whether you have a past history of presenting. And uh, quite often it was the reason why people would, at the end of the day, not present. So first of all, you had to be, uh, you had to be, to have to have some kind of a fame or to have some group around yourself, right? The second requirement was that you would <clears throat> be very well on a good terms with the vendor. So say, for example, I would wanted to present with the, on a Microsoft conference like TechEd. Back in the days, Microsoft TechEd would be a huge conference and it was very, very famous um, with, with all the Microsoft people uh, or people who are interested in Microsoft technologies. And quite a couple of times I, I wanted to present there myself. And the problem with that was that, like I said, it wasn't less about what I knew about the SMS uh, server, system management server, but it was more about uh, whether I had those experiences and what can I bring to the table in terms of recognition in the field. So essentially my opinion or what I wanted to share with other people or looking for other people to share things that was never really um, fulfilled for many of us, not just for me, but for a lot of people. So it was really just selected few who could present at the Microsoft ticket. The message had to be according to what the mess, uh, the vendor message is. You had to be famous. You had to be, to have uh, experiences in the presenting. So in most of the time, neither the people who would have the fame right? They wouldn't have the experience of presenting or someone who would have the experience in presenting wouldn't have the fame. And that so-called call for papers would end up for a lot of people basically nowhere, right? And that's that's about the time where um, I was visiting a conference 
the I forum just before that. And that became very clear to me that in every industry or in every industry back in the days, that was the issue, not just with the Microsoft products, but it was the same kind of thing with the, say, Citrix products and stuff like that. So being in the forum uh, kind of made me realize that there is, just like with the Microsoft products, there is a lot of uh, know-how with the people. And there's a lot of information that people are looking for, right? So this is what gave me the idea to start some kind of a gathering of people to um, to gather people around topic of uh, Citrix. And so when that idea came, um, the, f- the first gathering was about, I think we, we met up, there were like four people. And uh, I think Stefan suggested the name of Pub Forum because uh, my suggestions always were around to meet up in a pub like in an Irish pub, to have some beers and then have the conversation. And then Stefan came up with the name Pub Forum. And uh, this is where uh, where I like the idea of the name, the Pub Forum, because it was not just about the name or the formal name, but it was also about that this name was kind of provoking and calling as to, you know, we're going to call an event Pub Forum, which will uh, mean that you know, whatever we discuss there will be like a pub. Now, later on, I realized that wasn't a great name to uh, get a lot of people from the corporates or from the companies. But initial name of the event was the pub for, and that's where the, um, that's after about eight years, I realized that the pub forum was a great name, but it wouldn't gather a lot of people because, uh, you know, when you bring a request to your manager, which says, can I go to the conference, which is called Pop Forum? Of course, a lot of managers would think that it's really just about the drinking, which it was at the time um, and still is, but, you know, need to have some cover-up story. And that's why the name had to be some kind of a formal. So one of the things that I thought of was on the flag of the Pop Forum, there was a, a E2E, like experts to experts, right? And that resonated with the people much better than, the name the pop forum and a lot of people come up to me and said it's time to change the name of it so i said okay e to e and then i just added whatever buzzword was at the time which was the virtualization today that wouldn't really fly that well because today it would be probably ai or cloud or something something but at the time which was 2011 when the name got changed it was the experts to expert virtualization conference why experts to experts? Because there would be experts who would be presenting and there would be also people who would be experts as to listening. So from the very beginning, it was a very technical conference. I think yeah, it's so, still technical conference. Very technical. Yeah, it, 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 is, very, it is very technical conference. Uh, but th- there were a couple of other reasons as well why I uh, decided to make that event. So uh, a very important point was that back in the days, 20 years ago, when you think about being in IT, that would normally mean if I go to some conference, would where would that conference be? So most of the, say, admins, let's call it that way, would be allowed to go to some conference, but that conference would be normally within the realms of the same country or in some cases within the same city. So say, for example, an IT admin in, in Germany, he would normally go to a conference like for example, like for example, Cbit or something like that, right? But what I wanted to add was to add a benefit to us simple guys like the IT administrators to add the benefit which was at the time only available to say senior management that someone would say, okay, I'm going to go to Microsoft TechEd, and the TechEd would be held in say Seattle, right? Or it would be held in Nice, which for most of the people in Germany would not be an option because it would be a lot of cost. It would be expensive and stuff like that. So the travel was also a very important part of the idea of the pub forum so that people can not only uh, feel like they are traveling, let's call it an accompanying cost, but they would also feel like they are seeing some new places. And then from that grew the idea that uh, people would meet other cultures, people would meet other countries. So that would fit the narrative of getting people together from from not just one country, not just two countries, or not just countries that speak the same language, like, for example, Germany, Austria, and Switzerland, but it would be a conference which would kind of like a tech ad, but 
one eighth of the price, and uh, you know, with affordable hotels nearby, with affordable airports nearby. So that was something what I consider from the very beginning. And yeah, at the beginning, I thought it would be uh, in 2003. I thought it would be maybe at some point a conference that would have maybe 50 people. And and what, what in nowadays you do what two 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 fifty something like that even more so it would be right? it would be between two hundred there were a couple of events where we had two hundred thirty people, but um, it kind of lost the concept of what I seen it at the beginning, because what's the very important part to me at the conference is that the people talk to each other, that they create contacts and stuff like that, that they don't feel pressured or they don't feel that depersonalized conference where you just see a lot of people walking around and you don't really know who is who. Yeah. So I kind of figure out that the best size is between 150 and 200 people. And yeah, so we normally have about 180, 200 people. So that that is kind of the, the border where people still are able to communicate with variety of people. So on average, I would say a person meets between 20 to 40 people at the conference or at least says hello and having about 200 people allows the variety of people to pick from so to speak yeah I, it's one of the things i always you know if someone asks me what's e2e like right and i always say the thing about it is is there's you know 100 200 people there are how many but it's one group everyone will talk to everybody you, you're free to walk up to anyone and start up a conversation or they'll start it up with you that's not little clicks of people or oh i'm i'm you know this oh that's the famous guy he's not approachable no everyone's approachable and everyone gets together and has a beer or, or a coke or a water and 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 chats it's my favorite aspect and when i chat with people that at you know just recently in rome that's what they said we love the education we love the sessions they're deep dives from experts and we'll talk about that in a little bit but the the piece that they come back for each and every time is that that networking right it's it's being able to chat with anybody right and have a real conversation with them too yeah that is that is the primary idea but the, the idea of the event uh like i said it was uh it was a lot of factors that that uh brought into that uh the event would probably be not possible uh in the form it is today um unless i would have met uh, a few people that allowed me to believe fully that in this industry in the remote desktop computing or euc as it's called today that there would be people who would be willing to share or would start the conversation and one of the things that was very important for this conference to become what it is today was actually when I uh, been at one of the I forums and I seen you, Doug, and uh, Rick, to, I'm talking about Rick Dellinger, um, to see how easy you found to communicate with people. And I remember sitting in your session, there were people uh, that came up to you after the session and it was not a star-like attitude. You really took time to talk to everyone and i remember that the next session started and you just took the crowd and kind of went out of the room and then you and rick uh took all of the time to to talk to all those people who ever had the question and you know when i when i look back today at where the event became uh, at the end of the day i just enabled all those people who uh, I, I just created a platform it wasn't like i really made the conference myself it was really the people that were that were enthusiastic about meeting up. It was the presenters. It was the, everyone participated and, you know, had an input in this conference, but yeah, there were some, some, uh, some of the attendees and some of the events that I went through definitely influenced the, the, the conference as it is today. And of course, one of the most critical parts of the conference was the fact that uh, say we have some very famous presenter, right? Uh, and very famous, at least in the hands of the people, right? And then that presenter would, after the session finished, he would actually not just run away. Uh, what often happens at a lot of conferences where people get paid to present, right? And then they come up and all what they want to do is to go to, I don't know, New York or Seattle or whatever. And once they present, they, they're away. So one of the major 
differences with the E2E to that is that people, uh, like everyone else, presenters or attendees, they all participate to create this event and also through purchasing the ticket. And so that creates a bond between the presenters and the attendees that everyone is pretty much the same, right? Mm -hmm. So whether you have whether you have been CTP for 20 years or whatever, or whether you just manage a very small site, you can still come up together, have a beer, and become best of friends. Yeah. I mean, you know, speaking for myself, you know, I was always felt lucky that somebody wanted to chat with me about what was int- what I found interesting. Right. You know, I loved what I was doing. I loved the presentations I was giving because those are the technologies that I cared about deeply. Right. That stuff that I spent time on because I liked it. My job, it was never a job. It was a hobby. Right. And then somebody wanted to walk up to me and talk to me about it. Oh, my Lord. Really? And they pay me for this. And I think that, you know, what I learned is I'm not rare. We're all that way. Really, you know, it's in what you did is you put all those people together to that, that it's just like me or you or, you know, any of them. Right. So the next question would be, how do you find present, you know, how do you find these guys? Right. Like, I guess they surface themselves. Right. But, you know, how do you come upon, you know, putting together agenda and speakers and things like that? And how that change over the years? Well, one of the things that uh, I have been looking at, uh, at the at the beginning of the conference was um, so that this conference will be recognized in the industry. And the reason for that, uh, why I thought it was important, because uh, there are two groups of people. Uh, say, Of course, there are the attendees, but when we talk about knowledge, there are two groups of people. The one group of people, those who want to share what they, what they know, right? And those people are sharing that by doing the presentations. For some of the people, doing a presentation may be not necessarily an option, but those people would be absolutely happy if they are able to express their opinion about something. So say, for example, one likes to present about, I don't know, cloud, right? For someone else, it's very important not to present, not necessarily present, but to come up and to talk to that person and exchange his uh, views on, for example, whether the on-premises is better or whether the cloud is better to hear an opinion of the presenter. And so uh, with this constellation, finding the presenters was actually a very easy job. Well, first of all, um, one of the main concepts of the E2E is that there is no call for papers, right? If you have something to say, which is amazing, then there's always space for you to present at the E2E. And through that, I realized that there's, uh, there are a lot of people that uh, are willing to present for different reasons. That could be, for example, to share the experiences. That could be quite often where people look for same-minded people where they think, okay, I'm trying to do this automation thing, right? Is there anyone who actually tries to automate, I don't know, event logs or something, right? And then um, at the time when the event was created, say in 2000s, 2003, 2005 and stuff like that, it was more about the forums, right? Most of the forums were not really specialized. They were about, say, remote-based computing, right? But there wasn't specifics into that. And so I realized that a lot of people want to actually talk about specifics and wonder whether there are other people who are also interested in specifics. And and one thing got the other, and that was uh, that was the thing. Which I also also noticed that uh, when people, for example, present that there would be people that um, there were a lot of people that would be coming to ET that were not just necessarily to listen to the sessions, but to be able to talk to that big Doug Brown who had his website and they just, uh, you know, they just want to meet that person to know how did that person made it uh, to resolve that mystery where people are saying, okay, I would like to be in a community. I would like to share and I, will, I would like to make it on a mass scale, uh, talk on the conferences, have a blog and whatever. And so for a lot of people, that was a learning curve where they couldn't come up and say, okay, so does this particular presenter, does he has like a head of like an alien uh, where he stores that much knowledge? And then when the people actually meet those presenters, they realize that those are people like you and I and they- yeah, uh, just like them. Yeah, and, and that, that gives them a great boost 
to understand, okay, I can do it myself. And I've seen throughout the 20 years that a lot of people uh, just have a natural talent uh, to do that. And a lot of people also, with the help of E2E, became absolutely amazing presenters and share with the with the community stuff. That's that's amazing to see over time. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you. And and one of the things I, I, I saw at Rome was one of the presenters came up to you afterwards and said, Alex, thank you so much for giving me the chance. I was quite nervous, but it's wow, I couldn't believe I did this. And he was just so happy and thankful that, that you know, he had that opportunity. He's like, I'm coming back next year. I hope I can do another one. And, and just like you said, you know, he realized that that person realized that, you know, he's just like the rest of them. He probably knew that before, but now he took that step and and he did a great job, right? And and now he'll come back and do more. And and we all share a little bit of knowledge. And this was the really the original idea is we all share a little bit of uh, knowledge. If we get around, maybe have a beer or whatever, and we could and, and we exchange that knowledge, we're all better for it, right? And uh, that's a wonderful thing. Right. At the end of the day, that's a wonderful thing. It's not about, you know, who you are and, you know, anything like that. It's about just getting together and sharing knowledge. Yeah. Yeah. That, that person was actually Brian from Denmark. Yeah. Yep. And uh, uh, I mean, that was absolutely amazing. And that's that's the most satisfying for me to see that, you know, there are so many talented people. And Brian did an absolutely brilliant presentation. Yep. Yep. And uh you know, that just shows that there are a lot of people who have the knowledge, who have the skills, and etc., uh, and they would like to share, but they are too shy. And one of the things that always amazed me at the conference is that the people attending this conference, there are so many people that want exactly that, but they're very forgiving. So if someone stutters uh, first time presenting, if someone is very nervous uh, presenting the first time, people would always help them and always, you know, Someone would offer them a beer and say, you know, they they would be very supportive, and that's I think one of the great things compared to the vendor conference where people would, um, you know, there's always that pressure from the vendor, make it right. The, judge, the judgmental aspect of it. Yeah, yeah, there would be evaluation. We never do evaluation because at the end of the day, the evaluation is how do the people perceive whether they learn something, whether the presenter himself felt like he. Uh, was pleased with his performance. So there is no pressure of evaluation. There is no pressure of people being mean or whatever. So that thankfully never happened at the conference. And people are very, very supporting in that. And we had a lot of uh, people that that uh, where the first presentation was at the E2E, which is absolutely amazing. When we look today at the list of the Citric CTPs, for example, a lot of the, of the current CTPs had their first uh, session at the E2E. And that is just amazing to know. I sometimes uh, follow over the years some of the presenters and I just listen to them today and I just think, wow, this is amazing that this person at some point decided to have the to have the guts to say, okay, I, I will try to present. And that the people were so supportive that a great talent came out of that person. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. I mean, I think we all have that story. Anyone that's ever presented, somebody forced you to do it. You know, none of us, I don't think many techies are the types that just want to get up on stage. At least not at first. We tend to be nerdy introverts, right? And, and, but somebody pushed us. I know the person who pushed me. And, uh, uh, and I was very mad at him for doing it too. But, uh, I learned to love it and, and I wanted to do more of them. And, uh, tell me, tell yeah. me what the first time I ever presented. Yeah. Oh, this is a great story, Alex. So uh, I, I was a junior engineer at the time, and we got teamed up with senior engineers. So the guy's name was Doug Shreve, and and uh, and he took a liking to me, and I liked this guy. And you know, I was just a young kid, wanted to ask every question under the sun, and and he liked to talk and share with me. So we did everything together, and even if we were separate. <laughs> You know, like I had a job and he had a different job. You know, he'd come visit me or what have you. But one time he said, hey, I have to give a uh, presentation to a school board. You want to come along? And I was like, yeah, sure, of course. And I did not, I do not like schools. I did not like school. I did not, anything a part of it. I didn't want any, but I wanted to go there because, you know, I was like, okay, I'm, I'm on the other side of the table now. You know, I sort of had a little bit something in me that wanted to, to watch. And uh, so anyway, so he's doing his presentation. He gets done. He says, now Doug's going to stand up and talk to you about Citrix. 
I said, huh? <laughs> and he, he didn't tell me I was going to do this. Literally did not tell me. It wasn't like, Doug, you to be prepared. Literally, I had to stand up and start talking about Citrix in front of a school board. And, uh, and I stood up there and I was like, uh, um, uh, uh, but I, you know, I knew a lot about Citrix at the time. I loved it very much. I loved the idea of it. You know, I believed the idea of it and I, you know, I told it and, and afterwards I remember going to him. I was like, what the hell? Why, why did you, he's like, well, you know, you did a great job. And I was like, well, you know, you should have told me he's, I would have been prepared. He's like, well, next time you'll be prepared. I was like, I would have been prepared, but you know, and, and after that a bunch of these these teachers and you know the board members you know school board people came up to me and was like Doug you did a really great great job that was really great and it gave me a lot of confidence and I wanted to do it again I wanted to you know I wanted to become better at it and I and I love talking about it right it's like we get paid to talk about what we love that's an end share right and it's like at that time I was a kid that wanted to learn now I got to teach it was it was uh it was an amazing experience and from then it was any time I could possibly get up and 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 you know present what I knew, I I would jump at it, and uh, by the time I ended up at left Citrix I was doing three sessions at Synergy or I Forum I guess it was called back then, but uh, loved it. Well, it always it always takes some someone who encourages you. Yeah, that's that's it takes an opportunity. Right. It takes an opportunity. And, and what you did is you gave them an opportunity and, and, and built an environment that was friendly, you know, and, and what I had was an environment that was friendly. These people supported me. There's another guy. I'll, I'll remember this real well, too, is I just started Citrix. I was scared, just scared to death. And Ricky D, Rick Dillinger, was uh, had was sick or was busy or something. And I had to go up to Seattle and present. And it was October 2001. I'd been at the company two months. I think I had one presentation before that. And I had to do this presentation in front of a bunch of folks, maybe a couple, you know, a hundred in a room or, or something like that. And I get up on stage, do my thing. And in the front row was a man named Mark Wesleyan, who was one of the main guys at a company called Right Systems. And he just sat there very stoic, staring at me the entire time. He wasn't but 10 feet from me. And I kept seeing this guy, but, uh, you know, and I did my, th did my job. And when I was all said and done, he came, walked up to me and said, Doug, you did a great job. I'm Mark. Very nice to meet you. You know, welcome to Citrix. Welcome to, you know, to Right Systems, blah, blah. I'll never forgot that. And every time I see Mark, I tell him about this. I think he's sick of me telling him about it. But at that time, that guy gave me all the confidence I needed. Right. It was that the right time, right place. This person came up and said, Doug, you did a good job. I don't know how good of a job I did, but he, just by saying that, by supporting me, it meant everything to me, right? And it's one of the reasons I stuck around and didn't run back to Iowa like the scared little puppy, right? Mm -hmm. I love that man for it, really, truly do. Mark West. Yeah, I, I, I think I think the support of of uh, the people, and then it, it it often comes down as well to that someone specific who people put value in tells them that they did great and that really encourages people as well yeah. so the crowd definitely plays an important role but someone specific which who we choose as important uh uh evaluation of those people and then once that clicks and i mean like i said throughout the years i've seen so many uh people uh, stuttering the first time but then once they get the confidence because the confidence of, of knowledge in the very most of our presenters is always there just the confidence of speaking is something what people uh, gain over time, but the knowledge is always there in the skill. Do you have a story of somebody that really surprised you, or, or you know that that t t took off, or you know something that you? Oh, absolutely. At? Yeah, we, we uh, absolutely. There, there are a lot of those kind of stories, but I think the the most interesting story to me personally, there, there are two or three stories that are that are very interesting to me and to see them over the years. Well. Well, first of all, is uh, uh, we had the conference, and back in the days, we're talking about 2005, uh, there were, the, the community was very, very kind of smallish. There were only a couple of websites that would be, uh, that would have content, and everyone was looking at those websites. There were a couple of people that would be great in the forums. So it was very segregated. Back in the days, it wasn't really Twitter, or there wasn't really, there weren't really many blogs because the website looked, well, kind of like a TV website today. And uh, one of the interesting stories was, was, for example, Sean Bass. And Sean Bass is an absolutely amazing guy. And I, I kind of always remember uh, that specific story because Sean, to me, 
uh, he had an amazing skill. Well, he still has a, an amazing skill uh, in, in the whole EUC field. And so it was kind of like a, like a very interesting experience. So on one side, I was absolutely fascinated by the knowledge that Sean had. On the other side, Sean heard about the event, about the pop forum. So he was fascinated to, to be suggested to, to come to the event. So we were kind of talking to each other and it was, I was fascinated to have him. He was fascinated to be at the event. Uh, but uh, this is uh, an example where Sean had an absolutely amazing, uh, you know, skill and knowledge, but he didn't really have much of a presenting skills. And so when Sean had the presentation at the event, uh, which was in Nice 2005, and I think it was November. So Sean had the, this is that persona that a lot of people in the room know. You know, he's he in flesh. It wasn't like today where everyone knows everything about everyone through the Twitter, through the Instagram and whatever. So there was just that guy, Sean Bass, that was talking about the different um, security issues with the terminal services and stuff like that, about the patching and stuff like that. And then he is in flesh. Uh, but the Sean was so nervous at presenting uh, and I think at the time we only had about 150 people or something or 130. And so what Sean started to do is Sean talks normally pretty fast. And for non-native speakers, which most of the people at the in Nice event were, it, it would be difficult for them to understand Sean's talking English normally. But because he was so nervous, he actually talked about twice as fast. So not only did he finish the 40-minute session in about 25, right? But uh, the people did get the snippets of what he was saying. <laughs> and uh, so initially he was very, very nervous. But what was great, because not so many people actually heard exactly what he was talking about, but they seen the slides. What I seen is that a lot of people come up to Sean to actually talk, which was great because Sean got the confidence that people got the message right? Even though people actually come up to understand what it was and to talk deeper into the topic. And then with the time, Sean came again and again and again at the event. And over time, he just became an absolutely amazing presenter. And that was absolutely great to see because, uh, like I said, it was Sean being nervous about being at the event because he thought the event is something truly amazing, right? But at the same time, people were truly amazed that Sean came here. So, that was a, a great example of seeing people develop. Uh, another uh, example of uh, people coming and developing was, for example, um, there, there, there was a there was a well, there is a guy called Benny Fritch, right? Benny is a great presenter and was a great presenter long before the E T was even established. But at the same time, that's where the event started to get, you know, more started to become more popular. You know, like I said, Nice event was also one of those events. And uh, I seen Benny presenting before, but uh, what I noticed, what was really catch my attention was that Benny at the event, he could show his personality in a very different way than he would normally do at other conferences where he would be very formal, where he would be very strategic about what he goes in the slides and seeing that the, that the pop forum at the time was a very relaxed event, relaxed to the to the to the way that everyone would hold a bottle of beer when someone is presenting. So he showed a side of him which I was absolutely amazed because I never seen his presentation being like that. And so Benny became a much more human uh, to me in the presenting than he would normally or formally be at the vendor events where the vendor is looking at him, uh, what he's saying, and etc. So. That was another example with people who would have a lot of experience in presenting would all of a sudden open up a part of themselves that would be very social and very encouraging, which was also a, a reason why so many people come up to Benny after the, after the session. And, uh, you know, and Benny kept presenting in that way throughout many future events. So that was, uh, that, that was a great experience in cool. the last, yeah, and the last exp uh, the last example I would uh, say was uh, which was also very amazing to me was uh, Christian Brinkov. Uh, he's now a program manager at Microsoft, and um, one of the first present presentations that he had was 
at E2E. And I remember his very first presentation, he was super nervous, uh, stuttering a lot, uh, but yet, because he knew the, the, the topic he was talking about, he was very confident in that regard. So despite that, he finished the session, although I thought he would finish at about half of the session. But despite that, he continued on and with the support of the, of the, of the people in the room. And then he presented again at e and again and again. And listening to him today, listening at his webinars today, I, I just feel amazing about that. His first session was at the e or one of the first sessions and how amazing he is today. It was absolutely great. That's super cool. I can't imagine Sean being being new at anything. To be honest with you, I remember the old CTP meetings, and and you'd have Benny and and Rick, and, and you know all these Madden and all these guys in there, and they'd all you know give their opinions, and Sean would just sit there so quietly. You you would probably remember these. You were there, yeah, and yeah. Uh, and Sean would sit there so quietly, and everyone would you know their ruckus and complain and you know share and whatever. And then finally, Sean would raise his hand all politely and then just in the most articulate way, destroy whatever anybody else was saying and just yeah. and not not in a mean way. You know, that sounds bad, but just like just school us. And uh, I, I think he's the smartest guy I've ever met in my life. Uh, I oh, really absolutely. have the utmost respect for Sean Bass. Absolutely. absolutely. He's, and he's he's the most approachable person, too right yeah i mean he's just yeah. he has he fires on all cylinders you know that guy's that guy's pretty cool but they all are you know that's the whole thing is they all are and and nobody's better than well sean's better than the rest but you know what i mean yeah and, and a great quality about sean is that he's very supportive of new presenters yeah. as well yeah he's very articulate he presents the topics very well he adjusts to the audience and stuff and uh, i've seen many times that he encouraged a lot of people presenting and that was absolutely great I so mean, there, a, there, a ahead. lot of those stories I could, I could speak for hours about all the different presenters, and yeah, it's. Oh, you know, great. it's it's if you if you haven't been to one, definitely do. You know, it's every time I've talked to somebody that's been to one, they're like, I can't wait to go back, and that's sort of my view. I wish you had ten a year, you know. Uh, um, but uh, they're just great. They're great events. They're, they're it's a special event. It's a special group of people, and it's not always the same. I mean, you have the core people, right? But there's, you know, last time where it's last what in Rome, there's a good twenty new people there, thirty new people, something like that. I couldn't believe it. Yeah. The time yeah. before, thirty five, forty new people. So there's always new folks coming around. So, uh, so that said, I, next question, it's, we talked about all these successes and, you know, things that surprise you, you know, uh, um, or the, you know, what have you, uh, what is some of the biggest challenges you ran into? What well, maybe things that surprise you in not a negative way, but in a challenging way? Well, one of the, one of the biggest challenges for a very long time, like a very, very long time, actually right before COVID was always the budget of the event because um, on one side, uh, I would say up until the COVID, that was the most expensive hobby running this event I could possibly imagine because uh, hardly any event actually uh, ended up in the black figures. It would always be in the red figures. And uh, that was because of, um, you know, you always kind of have to balance the budget between on one side, you want to, uh, the event to be very affordable. It has to be in the right place, in the right hotel, uh, you know, with easy access uh, that people get the most value. And that was always the focus for me uh, in, in, in this event. And yeah, on, on the other hand, you have the challenges that people need to uh, approve the, the, the budget to go to this event. And one of the, one of the things back in the days that was very important for me that the whole experience, including the travel, including the hotel, including the conference fees, would always be within about 1,000 euros altogether. So to achieve that, uh, that means that there are a lot of things that needs to be done uh, manually, a lot of things that has to be always negotiated with the hotel, and et cetera, et cetera. So yeah, the, the, the budget is one of the things that was uh, and still is very, very challenging thing to do. Uh, finding the right venue place, finding the place that fits all the people. I always try that the event is held in a place where most of the people ha can have a desk and in front of them put their computer. So it's not just a theater style, but really 
with the desk in front of them so that they can work, that they can tweet and stuff like that. The other challenges that was more of a, something that was a challenge for the first 10 years, um, there were a lot of people that would uh, come to the event and they would um, say they would have an expectation of, um, say, I don't know, iForum, right? But at the same time, they would only pay about one-tenth of the of the event. So meeting those expectations versus to experiences, that was always a challenge. Uh, it is less of that today because, I mean, the other event prices are just through the roof. Uh, so it's kind of, I think we, we, we found after 20 years, we found a perfect uh, middle ground of, you know, the budget, the cost, the value, the offer, the venue place. So yeah, I would say the that's one of the main challenges. And the last challenge uh, that is probably of uh, uh, big importance is to, uh, I always look to have, when we talk about vendors, I always look to have presenters from vendors that are kind of, you know, like people from the, people like you and I, that uh, it's not someone just coming with some slides and just talks about the company and then leaves and no one knows who that guy was. So getting the right people from the vendors is, is a big challenge. But the great thing about that is the penetration of normal people and the vendors are so high today that it, it became much less of a challenge than it used to be, say, 10 years ago. Good point. Or, yeah, it makes sense. That's Yeah, I, I, I love that it's, it's affordable, too. Uh, um, you know, like you said, a thousand dollars for everything. I mean, I've never paid in the early days. You gave me a free ticket, Alex. I thank you for that. And although for years I didn't go, remember, it almost became a joke. It was a joke. You gave me all sorts of crap for not going, but I was living in the U.S. And at the time, it never worked out in my my schedule. And uh, but then I finally was able to attend one. And, and nowadays, of course, I work for Control Up, which is, a you know, we'll talk about the Control Up E2E uh, uh, sponsor, or, you know, partnership here just in a little bit. But I have one more question before we get to that. And you mentioned sponsors. And this is this is an interesting one, because the type of conference you have when it's techie for techie by techie of techie, you know, how does the sponsor fit in? You know, how do you deal with, uh, you know, vendor sessions? things like that. I think you do it perfectly, to be honest with you. Uh, uh, but I'll let you explain that. So the vendors, of course, with what I said before regarding the challenges of the event to offer the best value uh, with the least cost possible uh, and et cetera, it's always a challenge. So uh, like everyone else, uh, uh, you know, the event to be, to be sustainable, we need vendors. Uh, and when it comes to vendors, uh, or when it comes to sponsors, uh, there are things that have a higher priority than anything else with the event. Uh, I can say with the confidence that uh, the sponsors that we have are not just someone who just pays a sponsorship fee, comes in and just talks about whatever they want and just brings that marketing message and, uh, and, and then leaves and then no one knows who that person was. One of the main concepts of ATE is no marketing bullshit. And I'm not afraid to ever tell that to any vendor that wants to uh, do a sponsorship of the event. So a couple of things that is very important to the, or the core values of ATE is that the sponsors, they have to have no problem with other vendors or competitors coming to the event. Um, it is a very technical event, which means that no one is really interested in listening to in a 10 slide presentation listening uh, for eight slides about how great the company is and what is what great the market share is so e2e has sponsors that are absolutely competitors in the field uh, e2e has sponsors that have presenters mostly uh, in a technical part well when i say mostly i mean about 90 percent and Having sponsor uh, or having vendors, I wouldn't say sponsors per se, having vendors is very important because uh, most of the people that attend the conference are either end users uh, that work in corps or whatever, and the consultants. I would say the consultants make up about 60, 70% of the attendees of the event. And then comes the system integrators and the end customers. So 
the key uh, task of the event is at the end of the day to serve our customers the, po- the best possible way. Because many of us are consultants, our key purpose on this planet at the end of the day is to offer the customers the most lucrative offers, to offer the best possible solutions. And this is what I am focusing when I'm choosing the the vendors. So it is at the end of the day about the customer that decides whether they want to go with this or with that cloud, right? But we as consultants or as end users need to know what is the difference between them. You know, which one is the right fit for the customer? And, you know, it can never be that one uh, vendor can fit all of the potential needs. So the people need to have a conference where there are many vendors, right? When the vendors do not compete in a way where they would just say, all right, forget about the vendor A because I'm so great. No, where the vendor come and say, we are good because, right? And then they say, we have this case study where we sh- which we can show you. And this is why uh, this is this, this, and that. And here comes the absolutely best part. The presenters that we get from the vendors are not just the best in class, but those are the people who would back in the days very often be the same consultants like we are today. Yep. So which means that those people know all the needs, right? They know how to, uh, what the people want. They not only know what the people want, but the most important thing, and that is what is important for the vendor at the E2E is that E2E not only is a place where they can deliver the message, but most importantly, and this is what we will later talk about the control app, but with, where the vendor is talking to the end customers. And a lot of vendors neglect that, where the vendor says, okay, I'm just going to come and say our product is great because we can do this, this, and that. But some of the vendors, and this was an example with the control app, some of the vendors actually looked at the event from the perspective that I always wanted every vendor to be. So when the control app came up first, um, what they did, and that was a very different strategy to a lot of other vendors that came before. They said, we have this product, right? But we are more interested in not just presenting our product, but we're more interested in hearing what do you want from this product? And a lot of, in a lot of uh, vendors, they neglect that, but having an event like EQEVC allows a vendor, whatever product they're at, having access to the best experts in the world. At e we normally have about 25 countries visiting, people from about 25 on average, right? And those are really not just very, uh, very emancipated people, not just people with great ambitions to learn, to progress, et cetera, but people that can provide an absolutely invaluable and, and great feedback. So I'm absolutely thrilled that we have the best vendor presenters possible yeah. and they can and- teach us on... Yeah, Stop. and a lot of those vendor presenters, they were presenters before they worked for the vendor, right? So if, let's say, let's just pick on Citrix for a sec- second. You know, you have a guy named John Doe, and John Doe was a presenter talking about whatever technology. Now he's working for Citrix, and maybe he's the product manager, Eljo, for example, right? There's a great example. Yeah. You know, super yeah. smart guy uber smart great presenter dynamic you know the whole night approachable the whole nine yards he's doing sessions now he works for citrix now he's just doing the citrix session but the same way he always would with the understanding of both sides of it right that's how i see it yeah they're they're sponsor or they're the vendor but they're all vendor sessions Right. I mean, they're just it's maybe not be hosted by the vendor, but it's still a vendor. So you're talking about a vendor technology. What's the difference? Unless, of course, you're saying, yeah, we make this much money. We grew this much. Yeah, that's what. But that doesn't happen. You'll pull the plug. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. And that's that's what I think is amazing about because some of the people uh, who come the first time, maybe they look at the agenda and they say, all right, OK, on Friday, there are quite a lot of uh, quite a lot of vendor sessions. But the thing is, we work with those products every day, right? We need to know those products inside out. And quite often, if you go to the vendor conference, you would see that there are, you know, sessions that are very polished. 
Uh, and uh, let's face it, at the vendor conference, you'd never hear any criticism about the product. You'd never hear really a uh, comparison with other products and stuff like that. So what I really appreciate at the vendors that are coming to the E2E is that we have people that really are people from, you know, from, from the community. And, and those people, they present, yeah, they present vendor product, but they present it in the way how the people expect the presentation to be, how the people yeah. expect what they expect to hear. They present case studies. Those people are with the vendors today because they have a passion, and that's what they bring across to the audience. They tell the people, and this is the most invaluable presenters, that they that they present their passion, why they love Citrix, or why they love Microsoft, or why they love AWS. And, and this is, I think, a win-win situation for both the vendor and the attendees. Yeah, you got it. You got it. And, and let's to, to move on to Control Up. You know, Control Up, this was your 20th year. It was Control Up's 10th year. And there's so many folks I've run into within the Control Up community or at E2E or just out in a different show or wherever, you know, that says, you know, I was introduced. I didn't know about Control Up. I was sitting through Eugene's session. I learned about it. I bought it. And then at the next E2E or two years later, I learned that they had the scout piece or I learned this new feature that they were doing. I didn't know about that feature. I didn't know that I could do this, this, and this, and I would get this, right? And mm -hmm. uh, and that that's, I mean, it's it's huge. Now, it's very difficult to explain to marketing people inside a company, I'll tell you that much, right? But uh, uh, from the, 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 the ground level of the folks doing this work, that's the value right it's also from the vendor side too i mean it's huge uh, I, you talk to yoni you talk to eugene control up grew in the early days and i still think to to this day in in huge part to what you built you know to e2e and the folks there uh uh it's amazing and then those guys became evangelists for us you know they they uh, went and told other people right but it all started off with a simple session uh sharing you know hey this is what we do and this is how we can solve this problem and we know you have this problem we can solve it this way and you know oh and how you know we're thinking about this what do you guys think and 20 people say yeah do it this way 19 do this way right you know and mm -hmm. and we it's 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 a lovely thing to watch it's like back to the idea pub forum it's like going to a bar putting you know 10 techies in a, around a table and and coming up with something bigger than the sum of their parts right yeah yeah absolutely i i remember i remember i have to say the control up was an absolutely the most amazing learning curve uh i have had in the 20 years of the event because the first time the control up came up was so i i very vividly remember this whole experience so when the control up came the first time, uh, Eugene uh, asked me over email whether he can have uh, 15 minutes of my time, uh, which I thought, okay, uh, it's it's interesting that someone actually wants to talk to me. Uh, but uh, I mean, it, it takes a lot of brain to create a great product. But the control app showed me, uh, or the guys at the control app, uh, the, the the core of that, which was ten. I mean, ten years ago, that was a tiny company. It was like a tiniest startup you can imagine. And so, uh, the first time I, I met with the control app, it was of course the first time. It was okay. We're a small company. Uh, is there a way for us to get in? Uh, you know, we have a great product. We believe in this product. Is there a way for us to get a special price on the sponsorship? And uh, uh, at HVE, we always, uh, you know, try to support the startups. We try to support people's idea, whether it is a one-man company or whether it is a small 10-people team. And so Eugene came up to me and said, uh, yeah, so uh, the event is going. And then Eugene said, Alex, can I have 15 minutes of your time? And I said, well, okay, then I'll probably hear now about some kind of the usual vendor story where they say, okay, we're so great, we're so great. And uh, yeah, we make millions and millions, but can you give us a, you know, a cheap uh, sponsorship? But it was completely not like that. So this was the first time that someone actually sat up, sat down and said, listen, so Eugene sat down with me in a, in a restaurant and he said, okay, so look, we have this product and it's really amazing. We believe in this product. And uh, so uh, what are the people like, uh, what they would like to listen to and what areas or how we should present. So I explained everything uh, of that to Eugene. He listens very carefully. He is absolutely in love 
with the product or with the idea. He, you can see that he has a lot of passion. He t- tells me about the team, that the small team that they have, uh, Yoni, uh, Eugene, and other guys. And I think, wow, this is very, you know, this is very personal, uh, very personal in the terms that this is exactly what I want to, uh, to people feel at the event, you know, to have that personal connection. And so what was truly amazing with, uh, with Eugene and the Control Lab guys that came to, to the Rome in 2013 was that was a very different way of presenting. So Eugene starts to talk about the product and he says, we do this, this, and this, uh, just like every vendor does. And then at some point, about half the session, Eugene starts to talk actually to the people in a way that was completely mind-blowing to me at the time. Because, I mean, by the time I probably heard about 600 sessions, maybe how, maybe one-fifth of them, vendor sessions. But Eugene actually used the, the community brain in, a, in a, an amazing way. He started to ask for the feedback. So he used half of the session to get feedback on his product. And this is also something what I also want to the people to actually be able to do at the event. Because for every vendor, for every presenter, I say, you know, talk to the people, listen to what people say, because it's not just that you will hear someone's opinion, which you may not necessarily be interested in, but this opinion may be the business opportunity. This opinion may be an idea that you haven't thought of no matter how great your product is, this may be an idea that is actually lacking or missing in your product to make it a really great product. So he listens for that that feedback for 20 minutes and then the session is done. And then I see because of that engaging way of communication with people, he got a lot of feedback. So the next time they came and the control app was coming to the event uh, ever since, uh, every single event, and we actually grew together you know, through 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 the years, uh, you know, the control lab grew. Uh, the control lab recognized uh, the event that we had some input into the success of company, which was great because it is a success story for us. Uh, and then, with every single time they would come again and again, they would actually implement what people suggested, what was important. And this was, I would say, probably first approach of a vendor that did. Uh, that thing. And that was a great learning curve for me because I myself started to believe and recognize that the all the smart people in the, in, the, in the room, they're not just there to listen. And this is the most important part. They have a lot to say. They have a lot of suggestions. They have a lot of maybe critique. Yeah. So, and this is what Control Up always, always did great. So when there was critique, they always would take it on board. And then the next time they would come, they would say, they would Look at the person who said that critic and they'll say, hey, listen, we'll listen to what you said. Can you look at that? And that would also give the people that would uh, give feedback, that would also give them a uh, you know, sense of belonging, sense of being heard. And uh, I think over time, uh, when, when I look back at 10 years ago, and I would say a lot of the great functionality that today the Control Lab offers in their products is based upon the feedback. And this is, I would say, the greatest company, I would say, on the market uh, when it comes to getting the feedback. They understood that you can build a core product, but you need to interact with the people. And because the people is not just to give you feedback, oh, your product is crap, but people will actually give you the ideas how you can make your product much, much better. That was an absolutely amazing experience. I, uh, you know, I seen a couple of vendors after that, but uh, the control app, specifically Eugene and Yoni, they made an amazing job in, in utilizing not just every minute of presentation to talk, but using half of it to listen. And that's, that's that's something what I never thought myself uh, of 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 uh, when creating the conference as to what is important to vendor and there are uh, many other companies that that took that strategy and uh, they developed or enhanced their products to completely new levels. Yeah. That's that's great to hear and you know that was ten years ago that you met uh, Eugene and this conversation you shared and and you know now ten years you know today. 10 years later it's these those two are the same 
uh, they want to hear. You know, me as a the, you know running the control of community, what I get from them is, hey, we want to learn from these people. You know, how could you know if they if they have feedback, let's you know let us know. You know, we want that feedback feedback loop, right? Uh, it's it's not just hey, we're a big company, we know how to do it. Right. It's yeah. like, no, let's listen to these folks. You know, let's build something that they want, not that we think they want. And uh, um, I love it. I, I love that mentality because uh, that's I mean, that's again, I, I live by this philosophy of techie for techie by techie. Right. And, uh, um, and that's that's what E2E is. That's what Control Up thinks. And it's a great relationship there. And Yeah. What do you say, Alex? We, we we've been talking a lot, a long time. I we, we'll, we'll shut this thing down, but I have one more question for you. I mean, we'd go on for a couple hours, wouldn't we? For sure. Oh, absolutely. So uh, I told Alex he was livid, nervous. He's like, or not nervous. Like, what are we talking about? I was like, don't worry about it. We won't have any troubles talking. So uh, um, that's that said, you know, you have twenty years now. Uh, do you plan another twenty? You know, would you change anything? Do you have any? You know, or is it just you know you you created a great formula great people you know what do you, what can we expect for them from you know e2 in the future well there will be not just the european events but we'll come back to uh, going to the north america we will be uh doing more of the international events so that's definitely uh there are absolutely no plans to to stop anytime soon and uh, as long as i can as as long as I can be in the industry, and as long as there will be interest, uh, we definitely will continue to go. It's it's absolutely amazing to to have so many great people in 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 one place, and to be a platform for so many great people and for so many talented people. And yeah, absolutely. As long as there's interest, we will keep going. And Alexa, thanks. I, yeah, go ahead. No, I'm saying thanks to companies like uh, Control App as well that support us in this in this journey, and we support them. And it's uh, great, great uh, that there is such a recognition of the event in the in the community. Yeah, no, it's absolutely, Alex. I I remember meeting you. I'll sort of summarize by this. I remember meeting you. I think we have a different recon recognition recognition what whatever I can't. But it's late here. Uh, uh, but I we remember it differently. And uh, but I I remember meeting you the first time, and and I thought to myself, I like this guy, and uh, um, you know, I I I can't thank you enough for all you've done for me and all you've done for the community. Uh, uh, I wish I'd gone to more E2Es, but I'll never miss one. Uh, you've always been one of the most approachable stand-up people I've ever met. Honest, uh, you know, pure integrity, uh, uh, willing to share what you believe, whether, it, you know, I like it or not. And uh, I just thank you, you know, personally and uh, from, you know, so many of us that attend this great great event and, you know, and, and are sad when it's over, you know, and as well, we got to go back, you know, and I never feel sad about Lee. It's usually like, okay, great. I can go home now. And, uh, but E2E is something that's truly a, a special event. And I don't think there's anything like that. Uh, there's some close and there's some great groups of folks, but E2E is, is a little bit different. And I think that little bit different is Alex Cooper. So, um, from, you know, somebody that remembers you coming up to me, you know, 20 some years ago uh um you know it's now i come up to you and say thank you so uh you did a great job buddy uh, i'm quite proud to to call you a friend so thank you so much for taking the time to be on this show and for all that you do for the you know for the community as a whole well thanks very much doug and i mean always remember that the e2e today exists because of uh because of that session at the end of the day it's it's the the main reason why it exists today because of you and rick dellinger and uh benny trish those those are the three people that influenced the the creation of the communities today it's if i wouldn't be at that session seeing how easy you can be with the people and that that platform actually has a chance to live dog you are you're an absolutely legend and, uh, uh, I think I think you sat you in that session for... and said, "I can do that." <laughs> no, I was sitting. I was sitting in the corner, and I just thought, "This is so amazing! This is so amazing! They're just so approachable, and and they just take time. They don't run away." And it was, yeah, absolutely. You, Rick Dellinger, and then Ben Trish, those are the the mentors of this event. That's for sure. Thank you very yeah. much for for creating this, for no, no, no. having the community as it is today. 
Yeah, it, it, we all have our little parts, and that's what's so cool. And it, it's 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 like I said, it's something bigger than some of its parts. And you know, you mentioned Brian, right? Brian's Lego is on my Christmas tree, and it'll be there for the rest of my life. You know, as long as I put up in my if I have a you know a kid with Christine, there will be a Christmas tree or Brian's Lego there. This is E two E twenty twenty three Rome, right? So it's something bigger than the sum of its parts, and it keeps on growing. So that's that's community in a whole. And if someone asks me why I do community, because that's what you get out of it. I didn't go down this path on purpose. You didn't either. We just sort of ended here, and we you know, and we all have a little piece of it. It's a awesome, awesome experience. So again, uh, Alex, thank you so much for for doing this with me. What a what a treat. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. It was a great, great pleasure to talk to you. Okay, so that concludes another successful episode of Control Up Community Radio. I loved this. I, you know what? You could probably hear. We could sit there and share stories forever. And, and Alex has, well, he's done a great job. So what do I say? Thank you, Alex, so much for 20 years of, of sharing, of, of, of creating, of helping, of making people better. As I said in the intro, uh, Alex changed the world. And, you know, there's a saying, if you change five people or 10 people's lives, you, you can change the world. There's hundreds of people that came through E2EVC or benefited from the people that came through E2EVC. Alex shared a few of those stories today. And there's a bunch more, like you said, he can go on and on and on. And he wasn't the guy saying, you know, he was the one making it happen. He was the selfless person. And that's such a good, good thing. One of my favorite saving sayings in life is so shines a good deed in a weary world from Willy Wonka. And Alex, Alex is that. And, uh, so I hope you enjoyed the episode. Uh, if you're a vendor, please sponsor E2E, please go there. Even if you can't get a spender vendor slot, just show up. And don't show up, but you know, get your ticket and attend and hang out with us. We're a great group of guys, uh, a girls, a people, right? Not just I used to work. I'm old, so it's always guys, right? When I mean when I say guys, I'll, I'll pref I'll, I'll, I'll disclaimer this. I mean everybody, uh, uh, just the folks, the dudes, the people, you know, uh, uh, the the few, the powerful, the techies. And um, please c come in and just share, you know, share, talk, learn, grow. Uh, that's what community is all about, and that's what Alex built. Uh, if you're looking to sponsor, no better event than than to sponsor to sponsor than E two E V C. It's getting late, <laughs> and uh, but I wanted to get this out before I went and visited another community and went and did a session up in Dublin. So. Um, if you're thinking about going to a good conference, uh, E2EVC is one of the best. So please attend. Uh, um, go to E2EVC.com and you can see where we're going to be. I say we because I'm almost always there uh, nowadays. I'll never miss one unless I have to. And the next one I have to miss, my sister's getting married. I asked her to move it. She said no. That's how much I like this. So, uh, Alex, thank you so much. Thanks to each and every one of you. If you'd like to be on the show, if you have a good story to tell, uh, please message me, db at controlup.com. If you have a success story, if you love Control Up, let me know. I'll bring you on the show and tell that too. Uh, share that also. Um, yeah, let's have some fun. Third episode in the can. There's another one I'm going to record next week, and then next week, and next week, and next week. No, no, no. I'm taking some vacation. We have tons coming. Thank you all for joining this episode of Control Up Community Radio.